One crucial issue is the balance between technology and cosmology. The cosmology of all life is the way things work, the system, the process. There is a method to my madness. And the irony is that once you figure out that method, once you've begun to understand more and more of how the universe works, you run a greater risk of causing a breakdown. In this way, ignorance can be bliss. For you must remember that the universe itself is a technology. It is the greatest technology. And it works perfectly on its own. But once you get in there and start messing around with universal principles and universal laws, you run the risk of breaking the lo those laws. And that's a 40-yard penalty. It's not over for your race, but it is 4th and 10. It's time to throw a Hail Mary, and the quarterback is looking around for receivers in the clear. Are you clear? Are you able to receive this message? I am the quarterback, and the last time I looked, you and I were wearing the same color jersey. Are we still on the same team? Because every thought that ignores our oneness, every idea which separates us, every action which announces that we are not united is the other team. But also remember the other team is not real. Yet it is a part of your reality, for you have made it so. And if you are not careful, your own technology... That which was created to serve you will kill you. And this process of evolving has been going on forever. But now the process is taking a new twist. There's a new turn here. Now you have become aware that you were evolving. And not only that you were evolving, but how. Now you know the process by which evolution occurs and through which your reality is created. Before, you were simply an observer of how your species was evolving. Now you are a conscious participant. And more people than ever before are aware of the power of their mind, their interconnectedness with all things, and their real identity as a spiritual being. More people than ever before are living from the space of practicing principles that invoke and produce specific results desired outcomes, and intended experiences. This is truly an evolution revolution. For now, larger and larger numbers of you are creating consciously the quality of your experience. The direct expression of who you really are and the rapid manifestation of who you choose to be. That's what makes this such a critical period. That's why this is the crucial moment. For the first time in your presently recorded history, you have the technology and the understanding of how to use it. To destroy your entire world, you can actually render yourselves extinct. So hear my message. I have been speaking through authors, poets, and playwrights from the beginning of time. I have placed my truth in the lyrics of songs and on the faces of paintings, in the shapes of sculptures, and in every beat of the human heart for ages past, and I will for ages to come. Each person comes to wisdom in a way that is most understandable for them, along a path that is most familiar to them. Each messenger of God derives truth from the simplest moments and shares it with equal simplicity. You are such a messenger. Go now and tell your people to live together in their highest truth. Share together their wisdom. Experience together their love. For they can exist in peace and harmony. Then will yours, too, be an elevated society. The first principle of advanced civilization is unity. Acknowledgement of the oneness and the sacredness of all life. Indeed, all attackers are essentially primitive beings, for no evolved being would attack anyone ever. Come to realize that for better or worse, television is now the campfire of your society. It is not the medium that is taking you in directions you say you do not wish to go. It is the messages you allow to be placed there. Do not, do not denounce the medium. You may use it one day yourself to send a different message. There's nothing you have to do. 
but there's a great deal you can be. Human beings have been trying to solve problems at the doing this level for a long time without much success. That's because true change is always made at the level of being, not doing. Yet clearly, you will not change what you are doing until you change what you are being. It is a matter of consciousness, and you have to raise consciousness before you can change consciousness. So stop being quiet about all this. Speak up. Raise a ruckus. Raise the issues. You might even raise the collective consciousness. Are you up for being inspired? Are you up for being excited? Because learning about and exploring what other civilizations, advanced civilizations are doing should both inspire and excite you. Think of the possibilities. Think of the opportunities. Think of the golden tomorrows just around the corner. You will wake up. You are waking up. The paradigm is shifting. The world is changing. It's happening right in front of your eyes. This book is a part of it. You are a part of it. Remember, you are in the room to heal the room. You are in the space to heal the space. There is no other reason for you to be here. So don't give up. Don't give up. The grandest adventure has just begun. Highly evolved beings live in unity with a deep sense of interrelatedness. Their behaviors are created by their sponsoring thoughts. The basic guiding principle of their society is that we are all one. The second guiding principle is that everything interrelates and is interdependent. The mutual dependency of all living things in the species system is recognized and honored. In some highly evolved societies, beings live forever. But first, a HEB, highly evolved being, understands that all things are perfect. That there is a process in the universe that is working itself out and that all they have to do is not interfere with it. So a HEB never worries because a highly evolved being understands the process. There is no shame nor any such thing as guilt. And in your societies, you speak of yourself, your family, your community. A highly evolved being defines self quite differently. She speaks of the self, the family, the community. There is only one. The common good is life. If you are alive, you are contributing to the common good. It is very difficult for a spirit to be in physical form. To agree to take such a form is, in one sense, a great sacrifice yet one that is necessary and even enjoyed if the all is to know itself experientially and to recreate itself anew in the next grandest version of the grandest vision it ever held about who it is. Life is the process through which God creates itself and then experiences the creation. The process of creation is ongoing and eternal. It is happening all the time. Relativity and physicality are the tools with which God works. Pure energy is what God is. This essence is truly the Holy Spirit. By a process through which energy becomes matter, spirit is embodied in physicality. This is done by the energy literally slowing itself down, changing its oscillation of what you would call vibrations. That which is all does this in parts. That is, parts of the whole do this. These individuations of spirit are what you have chosen to call souls. In truth, there is only one soul reshaping and reforming itself. This might be called the reformation. You are all the God's information. God's information. That is your contribution to society and it is sufficient unto itself. To put this simply, by taking physical form, you have already done enough. I want, I need, nothing more. You have contributed to the common good. You have made it possible for the one common element to experience that which is good. 
Even you have written that God created the heavens and the earth and the animals who walk upon the land and the birds of the air and the fishes of the sea. And it was very good. And good does not, cannot exist experientially without its opposite. Therefore, have you also created evil, which is backward motion or opposite direction of good. It is the opposite of life. And so you have created what you call death. Yet death does not exist in ultimate reality, but is merely a concoction, an invention, an imagined experience through which life becomes more valued by you. Thus, evil is live spelled backwards. So clever you are with language. You fold it into secret wisdoms you do not even know are there. Now, when you understand this entire cosmology, you comprehend the great truth. Until your community of beings knows about being in community, you will never experience Holy Communion and cannot know who I am. Achieving must be defined as doing what brings value, not doing what brings fame and fortune, whether it is of value or not. And highly evolved beings value that which produces benefit to all. You have not developed very keen powers of observation. Highly evolved beings always see what so and do what works. Highly evolved beings have an awareness of sufficiency and a consciousness that creates it. Through the consciousness of the interrelatedness of all things, nothing is wasted or destroyed of the natural resources on the home planet. This leaves plenty for everyone, hence, there is enough. The human consciousness of insufficiency, of not enoughness, is the root cause of all worry, all pressure, all competition, all jealousy, all anger, all conflict, and ultimately, all killing on your planet. This plus the human insistence on believing in the separation rather than the unity of all things is what has created 90% of the misery in your lives the sadness in your history, and the impotence of your previous efforts to make things better for everyone. If you would change these two elements of your consciousness, everything would shift. To do this, simply act as if. Act as if you were all one. Just start acting that way tomorrow. See everyone as you just having a difficult time. See everyone as you just wanting a fair chance. See everyone as you just having a different experience. Try it. Just go around tomorrow and try it. See everyone through new eyes. Then start acting as if there's enough. If you had enough money, enough love, enough time, what would you do differently? Would you share more openly, freely, equitably? I see hundreds of thousands of people cheering as they read this. I see millions recognizing the simple truths here. And I see a new force for change growing in intensity on your planet. Entire thought systems are being discarded. Ways of governing yourselves are being abandoned. Economic policies are being revised. Spiritual truths are being re-examined. Yours is a race awakening. That you recognize this as truth can be tremendously encouraging if you allow this to be the fuel that drives the engine of change. You are the change agent. You are the one who can make a difference in how humans create and experience their lives. Be the difference. Be the change Embody the consciousness of we are all one and there is enough. Change yourself and you change the world.